I'm Micah Smith, and in this video, we're going to talk about an intro to packages. Now, I put this together because I know a lot of people are coming from version 10 or from version 11, uh, and they're not familiar with what packages are because that wasn't language that we used in those versions, or they're totally new to Automation Anywhere, and they just haven't used Automation Anywhere before, and they've heard some of this language thrown around. So I wanted to do a video where we just talk about packages themselves, what they are, how you can get them, and what that means for actually creating bots and running bots in your environment. Sound good? Cool. So the first thing we want to look at is what is a package. And I would define a package as a collection of configurable actions that can be used as the building blocks of bots. So we've got an example here on the right hand side of the screen. On, on the kind of left half of that, I have uh, what's, what's shown is the action pane that shows up in our developer interface. And in that you see a bunch of listings and all of those are packages, right? And so here we see like AWS send SMS, Active Directory, Analyze, App Integration. So those are all packages. And when you click that little down caret, uh, you can see all of the actions contained within that package. And so in this example, we have the browser package, which is open and it's got close and download file and get source link. So, all of those are actions contained within a package. On the right hand side of this little window, you can see here we've got a bot that's actually, you know, kind of started to be built in flow view, but it could be in flow view or it could be in, in kind of a list view. Um, but that shows us the specific use of those actions within our bot. Okay, so that's kind of where the packages come, come into play. Now, Technically, we use the word here actions as a part of our definition, but that would really mean a couple things. First, it means actions themselves. And if, again, if you're coming from a previous version of Automation Anywhere, you're likely familiar with the word command, right? We had commands in version 11 and in version 10, uh, and those different commands are what we would use to build our bot. Uh, that language has mostly been replaced with actions now. And, uh, you know, basically, a, instead of a command pack, we would have an action package, which has lots of different uh, actions. Um, but packages can also be conditional statements. So we've got like an if package that allows you to set up conditional statements to check for the presence of a file, the date of a file, um, matching two strings, matching numbers, things like that. Uh, we have iterators. So iterators are used for looping and that's one of our uh, kind of foundational problem solving tools that we can do uh, where we have, you know, basically the how many times do I want this thing to run and my iterators allow me to set that up. So it might be looping through a spreadsheet, going through every single row. It might be going through a data table, right, which is one of our, our new variable types and going through every single row in that data table. Or it could be just an iterator that's going up to a certain number, right? I want to loop through 10 times and each time I want to, you know, take some kind of operation on my spreadsheet. Actions can also be triggers, right? So we could have a trigger and that might be, hey, when an email shows up in this inbox or when a particular hotkey is pressed, I wanna kick off this one particular bot or I want this one function to start. And then we also have variables and you have the ability to uh, create custom variable types within your packages. Uh, and then you can also create those variables to show up on the native, you know, kind of display of the variable selector. And we can look at some examples of that as well. Now, where do these packages come from? So with Automation 360, uh, you have several different methods of getting packages into your development environment. And this is where things really start to separate from the version 10 or version 11 uh, logic that we had before. It used to be with version 10 or version 11, you would have you know, whatever commands were available to you when you install the product. And we go a bit further than that now with Automation 360. So the first is out of box, right? When you have the product installed and that's, you know, if you're using the cloud version or if you're installing this on-prem, um, there's over 70 packages that are included by default with your installation. And those represent hundreds of different actions from interacting with Excel uh, to browser automation to uh, making REST calls. So lots of different things that you can do with those packages that are available out of box. Additionally, there is Bot Store, and on the on the side of the screen here, we have a, a screenshot from Bot Store. Uh, currently, there's 45 plus. It looks like 48 per the screenshot. Um, total packages available in Bot Store. Those are freely available. You can go and download those. They extend on the capabilities of the existing product. So, if you want to do things like interact with Workday, interact with Salesforce. Uh, there's some really cool JSON parsers. There's even like a, an alternative web automation package. So you can go to Bot Store to check all of those out and install those directly into your um, control room. 
On top of that, the source code for most of those packages is freely available on our GitHub page. So those are some great examples to show you exactly how those packages are built, which leads into our final place to get packages from, which is custom development. So with Automation 360, you do have the ability to download a package SDK. And that SDK allows you to create your own packages and create your own actions. So the same things we, we talked about before, the variables, the iterators, the conditional statements, the actions themselves, you can create those all on your own. That SDK is in Java and uh, with some minor Java development, you can start creating your own packages. And the really cool thing about that is just like we looked at on that last screen where, you know, kind of all the packages were listed out on the developer interface. When you install those custom packages, either from bot store or from your own custom development, they integrate perfectly with the existing product, right? So it'll sit right next to the out of box packages and you can, you know, add your icons and add your logos and your descriptions. And all of that can look exactly like the core product. And so the, the real value in that is it allows bot builders within your organization to be able to take advantage of that. So if you're you know, pretty good with Java, you're able to create this custom package that calls some kind of customer validation uh, service within your organization, you can create that and then you can share that with all the other bot builders who are using your control room and they're able to take advantage of that package that you've created. And it should be relatively easy for them to use because it shows up just like the other packages that are already in their control room. So. What makes packages different than version 11 and version 10? And I think I just kind of gave one away. Uh, but the first is the integration, right? The display of the development interface is just like the out-of-box packages. So when you're adding those new custom packages, um, they show up in that list just like the custom pack or just like the packages that come out of box. And uh, you have the ability to obviously, you know, kind of change the way that the product works. And it allows you to have those different packages in the environment and then make those available to other users um, who are using your platform. Modularity. So this is another huge one for me. Uh, modularity is that the packages are separate from the core Automation 360 RPA workplace platform. And so what that means is they can be independently updated. And you know, hey, we just had a .19 release that came out. Uh, it likely included some new updates for different packages. So the nice thing is that those packages can be updated independent from the core product. Um, and, and the same is true with your own custom packages and with packages you get from bot store. You can download those. They could be new versions of, you know, whatever the package is that you downloaded before. And that versioning is what really, I think makes packages like my top favorite, uh, feature for automation 360. And, and that's that multiple versions of the same package can coexist in an environment. So I think this screenshot is from the browser package. And you can see that uh, since uh, March of 2020, it looks like, uh, I've had new versions of that package that have been automatically pushed out to my system. I'm on a cloud environment, so I didn't do any of the upgrades myself, right? The, the cloud environment was auto updated. And you can see that new versions of those packages have been pushed out. But if I wrote a bot in you know March of 2020, and it was using this version of the package, the really nice thing about these coexisting versions is that that bot can still continue to operate and is unimpacted by the fact that new versions of that package have come out. And so that's what's really unique about the side-by-side uh, -side versioning that exists in Automation 360 is that those versions can coexist and whatever my bot was originally developed with, it will continue to use that version of the package until I go and decide to change that. So that's a huge feature. Uh, if you've ever worked with you know, different versions of different APIs or different code being available, you know that that can be a pain to you know, upgrade everyone up to that newest version or to get people off of the old one. Um, this is a huge feature in my opinion. So. The last question we want to answer is exactly how do these packages work with my bots? So the version really matters and we just talked about versioning. Um, but when we think about what actually is a bot in Automation 360, it's really just a listing of actions and their corresponding configurations, right? So we showed an example of a really simple um, bot and I think the first slide there that just had two actions in it, right? And for each of those actions, it was a reference to a specific action within a specific package with a specific version, right? And so what our bot is, is really a reference to that. And it says, hey, for this particular version of this particular package and this particular action, 
this was the configuration, right? And, and my bot is a recording of that. And that way, when my bot gets sent out, it's sent out with those specific packages. So at runtime, when I send a task to a bot runner, the system will check to see, does that bot runner have this specific package of this version to support this bot run? If it does, then the bot run can get started. Nothing has to be downloaded. If that specific version of that specific package does not exist locally on that bot runner, then during that deployment process, the control room will actually send that package out, that specific version out to the bot runner. Now for the screenshot here, this one is a totally ridiculous scenario. This was a natural language processing package that I was working on. It's much larger than a typical package. So that's, I just did that so I could get the screenshot basically. Um, packages are usually from less than one meg to I've seen some at like 20 meg is, is pretty common. Um, so this downloading and, and you know, that kind of process isn't happening all the time once you're past the point of doing new development on your packages. But the really cool thing about this is that my bot runner can always be in sync with whatever the original package was developed on. So again, when we think about stability of my bots, when we think about stability of my RPA program, this one is huge. I cannot emphasize that enough that I have the ability to make sure that even if new stuff is coming out, new packages are available, new versions are available, it's not gonna impact my bots that I've previously created. So those bots that I wrote a year ago that were running fine, they should continue to run fine because again, they're referencing a specific package with a specific version and a specific configuration. And none of that has to change when a new upgrade or a new you know, rollout comes to play, okay? So hopefully that helped to kind of break down some more about what packages are, how they're used in Automation 360, um, and hopefully it gave you some ideas of how you can integrate some new packages within your environment. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Automation 360 content. I'm Micah Smith, go be great.